Hello students, welcome to the EPG Part Shala. I am Renu Arora, former head Education and Training Division, CSIR, NISCARE, New Delhi. Today I am going to talk about the module Types of Information Sources, Non-Documentary Organizations and Humans from the paper Information Sources, Systems and Services. In this module, we will cover non-documentary sources of information. It is essential for every information organization to carry out information resource development, which includes development of both documentary and non-documentary sources of information. The development of documentary sources is also referred to as collection development of the organization. However, it is also essential to develop or maintain the non-documentary sources of information as many of the formal documentary sources may not be able to provide what is otherwise available in the non-documentary sources. It is essential activity for modern information organizations as it facilitates providing of efficient and effective library services. The non-documentary sources of information are extremely important in the process of communication. This is due to the fact that when a user, while doing research or working on a project, wants some information immediately, he or she approaches a colleague or a non-conventional source. In view of this, let's take a look at the objectives of this module. After reading this module, you will be able to distinguish between documentary and non-documentary sources of information. You will be able to identify the categories of institutions and organizational information resources. You can learn about the various humans as sources of information. You can know what mass media and internet are and how they are useful sources of information. And lastly, you will be able to establish importance of organizations, humans, mass media and internet as vital sources of information in the modern day society. Before going into what are non-documentary sources of information, let us first understand what is an information source. A source is a place or a person from which you can obtain something useful or valuable. The sources from where we get information are called information sources and these comprise of documents, humans, institutions as well as mass media like radio and television. Information sources are significant for information organizations and information users. It has to be remembered here that information sources are different from information resources and reference sources. As already said, information sources are different from reference sources. Actually, an information source is one which provides us the desired information, whereas a reference source is used to obtain specific types of information which is compiled specifically and designed to provide information in a most convenient form. In other words, an information source is a source from where we get information and it deals with documents and non-documents. So, information sources are also different from information resources. Types of information sources. Information sources can be categorized as documentary sources, non-documentary sources and electronic sources. All recorded sources of information irrespective of their content and form come under documentary sources. These could be published or unpublished, in print or in electronic form. The documentary sources can also be categorized as primary, secondary and tertiary sources on the basis of their appearance. We will study about documentary sources in another module. 
The non-documentary sources of information can be defined as those sources and resources of information that are not contained in any document. The non-documentary sources comprise of formal and informal sources. We will further discuss the non-documentary sources in this particular module. Thirdly, the electronic sources also referred to as e-sources or e-resources. These are materials which require computer mediation in order to access their contents and make it useful. Both online and offline resources are the kind of e-resources. This figure shows categories of documentary sources. Documentary sources can be categorized as primary, secondary, and tertiary. Research is based initially on the analysis of primary sources guided by the perspective on which the topic which already existed via secondary sources and the tertiary sources only provide only a journal view of the topic. In fact, we can also categorize documentary sources as primary, secondary, and tertiary in the order in which these have appeared. The first to appear are the primary sources, and when whichever is appearing second after the primary is secondary, and last to appear or the third category is the tertiary source. Let us now understand what are non-documentary sources of information. The non-documentary sources of information are those sources of information that are not contained in any document. These sources comprise of formal and informal sources. Formal sources include information of research organizations, societies, industries, government departments, universities, consultants, etc. The informal sources include the human sources, conversation with colleagues, consultants, experts, resource persons, mass media, etc. So, because these sources are not formally recorded anywhere and they are not in the documentary form, these are referred to as non-documentary sources of information. And these are very vital for any R&D organization or any large scale academic institution etc categories the main categories are firstly institutions or organizations these include academic institutions government ministries and departments research and development organizations societies publishing houses internal and national agencies etc as you can see in the figure the second category is the human. In fact, humans are a very bigger source of non-documentary sources of information. These could be the experts, consultants, resource persons, extension workers and even the common human beings. The third category of non-documentary sources is mass media. Mass media other than print media that is any means of public communication that can reach a large audience. And fourth category or the last category of non-documentary sources is the internet. Internet being an interactive digital media is different from the traditional media such as print and television. We will be discussing all the four categories in the subsequent sections of this module. Institutions and organizations as sources of information. The institutions that make available information to user are of several categories. It is a known fact that information made available by institutions or organizations is always authentic. The first in this category is the academic institutions. These are universities, colleges, IITs, medical law, pharmacy management schools, etc. The secondary schools, senior secondary schools, etc. are falling under this category. 
The second category is research and development organizations. The key activities of R&D organizations is generating information through research work. The research related information is published in the form of research papers, short communications, reports and monographs. The third category is international agencies. An international organization is an organization with an international membership scope or presence. These organizations operate at international or regional level and usually collect, process, generate and disseminate useful information through their product services or publications. The next category is the government ministries, departments and agencies. These usually make available authentic and latest data related to their sphere of activity as they gather and generate information from their own sources. The ministries, departments and agencies are usually approached for a large variety of information by planners, policy makers, researchers, decision makers, etc. The next category that is exhibitions and trade fairs. These are highly informative and provide a great deal of information concerning exhibits displayed in the exhibition. During many exhibitions, conferences and panel discussions are also held, which are a useful source of information for concerned users. Trade fairs, on the other hand, are massive, stage-set and usually regular trade events at which a large number of manufacturers from industry present their products and bring out the information for the end users. Some trade fairs like the book fairs attract participants and visitors from all over the world and provide widespread interaction and exposure. And lastly, the learned societies and professional institutions. These are also referred to as scholarly societies or academic associations or professional institutions. And they exist to promote an academic discipline or a profession and a group of related disciplines or professions. Institutions and organizations as sources of information. These are again in several categories. Firstly, the publishing houses. These bring out catalogs, prepare databases, bring out publications being brought out as part of some series and all these are important sources of information. Second category that is database vendors. These are the most appropriate sources of information when details about a database, sources available in it, services provided by the same and associated costs are required by users. The third category is museums and archives. Museums enable people to explore collection for inspiration, learning and enjoyment. In other words, they are institutions that collect, safeguard and make accessible artifacts and specimens which they hold in trust for society. The next category is libraries and information centers. The libraries and information or documentation centers usually provide services based on their documentary sources. But many of the modern libraries, depending on their objectives, also acquire non-documentary sources of information. The international organizations are very vital as non-documentary sources of information. Many of the international organizations, they don't bring out formal publications. Many of them do bring out formal publications. So in this way, they become very important as non-documentary sources of information. An international organization is an organization with an international membership scope or presence. These organizations operate at international or regional level and they usually collect, process, generate and disseminate useful information through their products, services or publications. Many times vital information is also available from the websites of these international agencies.
The international agencies usually collect statistical details from various countries related to academic activities, socio-economic data, scientific workforce, and many other areas like cultural, demographic data, etc. Some of the examples of international organizations are United Nations, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, World Health Organization, International Atomic Energy Agency, etc. Then we have the research and development organizations. Again, the R&D organizations act as very vital source of non-documentary sources of information. The key activity of R&D organizations is generating information through research work. This research-related information is published in the form of research papers, short communication, reports and monographs. Research and development organizations usually establish information centers. In such cases, there is a possibility of discussion and exchange of information between the members of the association. These organizations make available details related to core area of research work to scientists. Biographical details of individuals working in these institutions, service profiles, laboratory notebooks, correspondence, details of path to achievement and any other significant information related to individuals or research work. Some of the examples of research and development organizations are National Physical Laboratory New Delhi, Defense Research and Development Organization New Delhi, National Remote Senses Sensing Center Hyderabad, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology Pune. Then we move on to the next category that is the Information Analysis Center. An information analysis center is a formally structured organization which is established for the purpose of acquiring, selecting, storing, retrieving, evaluating, analyzing and synthesizing the body of information in a specialized field of knowledge. The chief activities of an information analysis center include analysis, interpretation, synthesis, evaluation, packaging and repackaging of information. The process is carried out by subject specialists and result in production of new information in the form of reviews, state-of-the-art reports, monographs, compilations, etc. For example, the FICCI Research and Analysis Center, New Delhi, Information Sharing and Analysis Center, National Security Database, New Delhi, Information Analysis Centers, Defense Technical Information Center, United States. So, there are several information analysis centers available all over the world and these are completely different from information centers or special libraries or databases and data banks. Let's now learn how humans can be sources of information. Research into everyday information seeking behavior of most of the library users has revealed that people ask other people for a lot of information. This means that at times for some exclusive information, a particular person is objectively the best source. In other words, like organizations, people too can be sources of information. Human beings are considered an important source of information as the educational background, knowledge, experience, maturity and exposure to various situations makes certain categories of individuals as authority on certain topics. There are various categories of humans that can be considered as sources of information. The first in this category is library consultants. Library consultants focus on different types of libraries, on information technology, on websites, on space planning, on fundraising, marketing library products and services, or in other disciplines. 
The library consultants are either librarians who have developed their expertise by running or working in libraries, or they are people from outside field who have specific knowledge relevant to libraries and information organizations. Next in this category are information brokers. Information brokers are knowledgeable persons and obtain information desired by their clientele from various organizations and then pass on the answers or information related to sort queries. They usually help their users in getting appropriate information for projects, research, market surveys, etc. Third in this category are peers or expert. These are usually persons who are an authority in a subject area. They are widely recognized as a reliable source of techniques or skills whose faculty for judging or deciding rightly, justly or wisely is accorded authority and status by their peers or the general public. Next in the category are the resource persons. A resource person is one who has knowledge, relevant skills, competition, expertise and competence and gives a talk, guidance or first-hand information in a given subject or area. They are often persons who are well versed with the subject matter but are considered different from experts. And last in the category is the extension worker. Extension workers is, a, is an individual who is knowledgeable about a particular area and extends assistance to users beyond the normal area of activity. In other words, an extension worker usually reaches the users and provides all type of assistance. Besides the humans as sources of information, we have already talked about there are some more categories of individuals who act as sources of information. These are firstly trade representatives. Trade representatives are professionally qualified personnel experienced and well versed with their work. They are able to answer most of the technical queries raised by their customers related to product specification preference for a particular product, need-based product, market trend, etc. Next in this category are invisible colleges. Invisible colleges not only highlight the significance of informal communication in the information transfer process, but also help to grasp the characteristics of information network among scientists and researchers. We also have Technological gatekeepers in this category. A technological gatekeeper can be defined as a key person who facilitates information transfer by informal communication. This is enabled by acting as some kind of intermediary between information source and information seeker. Then of late another category has emerged. These are the patent attorneys who are legal experts on patents and deal with all legal aspects of patents. They assist the inventor in drafting the patent application and carry out the related activity. In the industrial sector, especially in the small scale industry, we usually have officers on the staff referred to as an industrial license officer who is responsible for establishing and maintaining a license between industry and its sponsors, innovations, etc. These are also acting as sources of information. And last in the category of humans as sources of information are common persons. Common men act as important sources of information in a large number of situations. Examples of common men who act as sources of information are our elders in the family, colleagues and friends, priests, village headmen, postmen, receptionists, etc. When we talk about humans as sources of information, 
the role of library consultants is very vital a consultant is a professional who provides advice in a particular area of expertise such as marketing finance economics accountancy technology law human resources medicine public affairs communication engineering etc a consultant is usually an expert or a professional in a specific field and has a wide knowledge of the subject matter users have to pay fee as fixed by the consultants for using their services a consultant usually works for a consultancy firm or is a self employed person and engages with multiple and changing clients thus clients have access to deeper levels of expertise than would be feasible for them to retain in house and to purchase only as much services from the outside consultants as desired often a consultant provides expertise to users who require a particular type of knowledge or service for a specific period of time thus providing an economy to the client information brokers information broker is an individual or an organization that on demand seeks to answer queries using resources available in various places information brokers are in this business for the purpose of profit and themselves do not have any sources or resources available however they are knowledgeable persons and obtain information desired by their clientele from various organizations and then pass on the answers or information related to sought queries they usually help their clientele by getting appropriate information for projects research market surveys etc the services offered by information brokers are cost effective and also save the time of the clients besides this information brokers are also referred to as consultants or consultancy organizations when we talk about humans as sources of information invisible colleges are one of the excellent things that has happened as far as human sources of information are concerned when we talk about inf- invisible colleges these are a group of personnel who have come together and there is no formal setup or structure it is only an informal setup and hence the name invisible colleges it is usually the academicians who have come together invisible colleges help to disseminate unfiltered informal communications produced by communities of people who share an interest in a common subject or discipline email personal conversations conference papers unpublished diaries meeting minutes phone calls newsletters memoranda and other sources that may not pass through the usual publishing broadcasting and distribution channels ensure that invisible college phenomena works effectively invisible colleges not only highlight the significance of informal communication in the information transfer process but also help to grasp the characteristics of information network among scientists and researcher community then another example or we can say another category of humans as sources of information is the technological gatekeeper the name technological gatekeeper has come in because these are the people who open gates of knowledge to other people and hence the name technological gatekeeper a technological gatekeeper is a person who is well informed professional in a particular field usually some scientists technologists and professionals in a technical or business organization have a tendency to acquire information from various sources to keep themselves abreast of the developments in their field and to disseminate the information to a person or group of people who may be interested in that information so these people help to provide information to all the other people thus a technological gatekeeper can be defined as a key person 
who facilitates information transfer by informal communication this is enabled by acting as some kind of an intermediary between information source and information seeker and besides this as humans as sources of information we have the best category these are the common persons common human beings as you would have observed there are a lot of facts referred to as common knowledge for which formal information sources need not be consulted for this in our day to day activity a lot of people provide us assistance in many ways the kind of information one may require be about someone's family background or first hand information on a place of tourism or way to a particular destination or details concerning a religious function ceremony etc in many families and even in villages elderly persons although illiterate are usually a reservoir of knowledge when one is pursuing historical research some other acceptable examples of common knowledge are related to general common knowledge well known historical facts known data and time of some event etc thus we find that common men usually act as an important source of information in many and varied situations examples of common men who act as sources of information are our elders in the family colleagues and friends priests village headman postman receptionist etc let's now understand how mass media is a source of information mass media is media that is intended for a large audience it may take the form of broadcast media as in the case of television and radio or print media like newspapers and magazines the news agencies and newspapers publishing houses are also referred to as press radio and television broadcasting stations are also in the category of mass media many people around the world rely on this form of media for news and entertainment and globally it is a huge industry press or media the news agencies and newspaper publishing houses are referred to as press the newspaper publishing houses bring out newspapers weeklies biweeklies monthlies and annual publications they usually maintain all the back issues in their libraries or archives the back issues of the publications are an important source of information not only for news items but also for photographs special features video clips etc in many of the news agencies etc the back issues of their publications are nowadays kept in electronic form because it is very difficult to maintain the printed newspapers etc for a very very long time for users requiring information while conducting historical research preparing bibliographies or biographies etc these sources are highly valuable broadcasting stations radio and television broadcasting stations are also valuable sources of information as these days these cover speeches features summaries debates discussions etc by prominent personalities the broadcasting stations usually keep all their records in cds VCDs and DVDs of all the events these are maintained properly in the form of a media library and are available for use as and when required presently a lot of private channels are also operating in this area and some examples are CNBC NDTV Zee TV Star TV Aaj Tak etc all of these are quite prominent in providing discussions speeches features debates etc on current topics let's now see role of internet as source of information 
internet with its many other uses is also used as a source of information on almost any available subject imaginable with online encyclopedias and different sites on various subjects to gather information about a topic is a very easy task internet is interactive digital media and is different from the traditional media such as print and television the web gives latest news related to any event from any part of the world and very often making available the news before it is broadcast by other media so we have covered in this module the various non documentary sources of information let us now conclude and know what we have learned from this particular module we have learned that the importance of various sources of information the sources of information can be documentary or non documentary the non documentary sources of information are those which are not recorded in any form the non documentary sources of information can be defined as those sources and resources of information that are not contained in any document these sources comprise of human beings organizations mass media like television and radio and internet in addition to this we have also seen that there are different other sources which we have not been able to list here but in your work situation you can see that plenty of other non documentary sources are existing the other details concerning this module are given in your e course material along with references and web references thank you